guys and welcome to another one of my reviews today we are talking and testing and reviewing a mini cooper se countryman now the name might sound peculiar to some of you guys out there that are familiar with uh, mini's offerings and i can totally understand that whereas you could totally understand the cooper s and the countryman in the name what's up with that e well this is Mini's first plug-in hybrid model. It is their take on the future. It is a vision of how they imagine the future of, uh, of mobility. So earlier this year they revealed the Mini uh, electric concept, which is a preview of a future fully electric car. But until we get there, we are dealing with this, a plug-in hybrid. And to be honest, it is a notable try. It isn't a success. The reason I'm saying that is because this car, even though it has the same powertrain layout as the BMW i8, it's nowhere near that car. So let's dig in. The car starts its life as a mini Countryman Cooper. What that means is under the hood you have a 1.5 liter 3-cylinder turbocharged engine and that may sound familiar because it's the same size and layout as the one on the BMW i8. Unlike the 230 horsepower unit on the i8, however, this one has 136 horsepower and 220 newton meters of torque. Now this engine is used to power the front wheels alone. Uh, on, in, on the rear axle, however, we have an electric motor good for 88 horses and some 165 newton meters of torque. Together, they deliver 224 horsepower and 384, uh, uh, 385 newton meters of torque, which adds up to about 284 pound feet of torque. Now, those numbers are pretty darn close to the JCW, as a matter of fact. This car has the most torque of them all. And it's also an all-wheel drive car because when you're using both the front engine, the front internal combustion engine and the rear electric motor, it's an all-wheel drive car. However, there is no transmission tunnel because you don't have, you don't need a uh, coupling between the front of the car and uh, differential at the back because the rear axle is powered exclusively by the electric motor. Now this in turn translates into a rather sporty feeling behind the wheel because the electric motor will power the rear wheels and the car will not understeer whenever you push it. Of course that's until the uh, internal combustion engine kicks in and that's when you start to notice some understeer. But overall the car does feel really nice to drive and even though it's a couple of kilos heavier than the heaviest countryman out there uh, it's still fun to drive and quite um, sturdy and bumpy over uh, uneven roads potholes are felt throughout the car because the suspension has been set up to be a bit on the sporty side and not as comfortable as you'd expect so together we have 224 horsepower and 385 uh, newton meters of torque. Those figures sound good on paper, but they also give the car the Cooper S in its name. The E comes from the electric motor, of course. And the whole purpose of this car was to offer eco mobility for people living in busy cities. And that's, in a nutshell, Mini kind of achieved that. The thing is, the battery is way too small. It's a 7.2 kilowatt uh, hour battery that only lasts for about 20 kilometers or 12 miles around town let's say maybe 15 miles or 25 kilometers but that's if you can really abstain from pushing the uh, electric gas pedal um, too much 
So around town you will get about 20 kilometers of electric range. Now, if that is going to be enough for your daily chores, depends entirely to you because it depends on how far your office is, how far you need to go to go gro grocery shopping and so on. For me personally, two, 20 kilometers are not nearly enough for my daily chores. So I will end up using the internal combustion engine all the time. The problem with that is once the battery drains, you have a small 1.5 liter three cylinder petrol engine to deal with a car that weighs 1800 kilos and it will burn through fuel like crazy so it won't be as fuel efficient as you'd expect it around town I saw a fuel consumption of about 10 liters of gas per 100 kilometers at uh, that and that's a, a conservative estimate I'm guessing it will do 12 to 13 liters per 100 kilometers easily once the battery is depleted and that's one of the biggest faults this car has because it's really not all that um, eco-friendly around town furthermore you can charge it up and it will take about an hour and a half if you use a high power charging station otherwise if you charge it at home it will take about four or five hours so you would have to wait for quite a while to make sure you're driving in an eco-friendly mode speaking of which the car, the car has three driving modes max e-drive auto e-drive and safe battery mode max e-drive is pretty much self-explanatory it will use the battery exclusively unless you push the gas pedal all the way down past the kick down point that's when the uh, internal combustion engine will kick in to offer a bit more power then you have auto e-drive which is the default driving mode and it should be choosing between the most efficient way of traveling around tri uh, around town and uh, the most efficient way of driving the thing is I don't like how it's set up because you set off in pure EV mode and that means you're driving in electric mode okay so I'm okay with that but the problem is you will be driving on pure electric mode until the battery depletes and then you're off on your own using the petrol engine in my opinion it would have been a lot better if the this, this driving mode would have been set up uh, similar to what the Prius does basically you're saving a lot of fuel by using the electric motor when you're setting off and then you can use the internal combustion engine to keep going basically I would have loved it if the car would just set off up until 10 or 5 kilometers an hour that's where you burn the most fuel that's where um, uh, the most energy is being consumed you could have used the electric motor just to set off and then the internal combustion unit and I'm pretty sure overall the fuel consumption would have been driven down and the car would have been a lot more efficient now as the as it is set up in the Mini Countryman Cooper SE the auto e-drive mode really just burns or, or goes through the entire battery instantly and then you're left off with the internal combustion engine and then there's the safe battery mode where, where you're basically using the internal combustion engine under the hood to power the wheels and recharge the battery at the same time and of course the fuel consumption will go up that said if you're going outside of the city centers and outside of urban areas you may be thinking okay the fuel consumption will go down well you'd be wrong First of all, this car is heavier than any other Countryman, as I already said. And if you're not using the electric uh, motor at all, if you don't have any battery left, you will be sipping a lot more fuel. Furthermore, the electric motor in the back will disengage itself once you hit over 78 miles an hour or 120 kilometers an hour. So basically, if you want to do highway speeds, you're on your own, you have to use only the tiny 1.5 liter three-cylinder engine at the front so if the car already weighs 1800 kilos and you already you add two or three people two, two or three passengers and some luggage in the back you're probably looking at a two-ton vehicle being powered by a 1.5 uh, three-cylinder engine with 136 horsepower and that is not nearly enough the car will consume a lot of fuel 
So I've only been saying bad things about it, but what are some good things? Well, the car offers a lot of space. Even though you have an electric motor in the back, the boot space is uh, cut by only 50 liters from 450 liters to 400 uh, liters of storage space. So it's pretty roomy inside. Everyone I've talked to about the car and showed them and introduced them to the car said that it looks really compact from the outside but has a lot of room inside and I agree there's a lot of room inside you feel as if you are in an SUV and Mini actually claims this is a crossover so it makes sense but the biggest issue the Mini has is the fact that BMW offers the BMW i3 so considering the fact that Mini claims the Countryman Cooper SC plug-in hybrid is meant to be used around town and not outside of it the mini the bmw i3 becomes a much more obvious choice in various markets they have similar price tags and they uh, various governments offer discounts for um, new cars that are hybrid or electric but usually the discount for an electric car is higher than one for a hybrid so you'd get a lower price tag including these discounts government grants or whatever you want to call them uh, if you're buying a BMW i3 so it becomes more uh, it becomes cheaper furthermore the i3 has a battery that lasts for about 300 kilometers and that is a vast difference compared to the, this mini Countryman Cooper SE sure you can go outside outside the city center either with a BMW i3 uh, unless you have a range extended model however uh, it does uh, if you're using both of them inside the city as the manufacturers claim where you're supposed to uh, the i3 makes a lot more sense so that being said the mini cooper se hybrid is a first step in a new direction so we shouldn't judge it too harsh because mini at least is showing uh, an effort in this direction maybe it's not the car we're hoping it to be but it is a good choice for now it is a step in the right direction as I said so at least the Brits are trying however the biggest fault the the mini uh, countryman Cooper SE has is the fact that if it is used around city centers and urban areas the BMW i3 is its main rival and it's a known comeback when it comes to uh, using them inside busy cities that being said this has been my review of the mini countryman cooper se i hope you guys liked it and if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe maybe leave a comment to offer some suggestions thank you and see you guys next time